Hi, I'm Brianna. I'm a keeper here at Nayati, and today I'm going to be reading The Problem with Prickles, written by Barbara Doval, pictures by Dennis Hockerman, to our lovely African crested porcupines. It was a fine summer day. Bucky Beaver sat on an old tree stump waiting for Razzy Raccoon. He was looking forward to a long afternoon playing with his friend. Suddenly, something sharp poked him in the back. Don't move, I've got you, said a rough voice. Bucky jumped. The sharp thing poked him again. Then he heard a little giggle. Jerking around, he saw Razzy and Prickles porcupine. Jumping up quickly, quickly, Buckley, Bucky yelled. What do you two think you're doing? You nearly scared the life out of me. He rubbed his shoulder where Razzy had been sticking him with a pine cone. Sorry, Bucky. We just couldn't resist when we saw you sitting there, said the porcupine. Look, we found this pine cone. It's the shape of a football. Let's play. Just then, Reva and Ruby, Razzy's little twin sisters, came running out of the woods. Can we play too, they yelled, jumping around with excitement. Bucky looked doubtful. I don't know, he said slowly. You might get hurt. Football is a very rough game. We can play touch, so it won't be too rough for the girls, Razzy suggested. Let's do it. Bucky still looked doubtful. I don't know, Razzy. Even playing touch with prickles can be dangerous. I'll be careful, promised the porcupine. Please let me play. The porcupine was a nice animal, and Bucky liked him, but it was always a challenge to play with him. The porcupine's body was covered with long quills that were as sharp as little razors. Sometimes they let go and stuck in anyone they touched. For that reason, many animals feared him, and he didn't have many friends. Come on, Bucky. Prickles and I will play against you and the girls. We'll even let you have an extra person on your team. How's that? Razzy was a fun lover and always wanted everyone to have a good time. He was one of the few animals that were friendly to Pickles. Bucky wanted to play too, but he wished they didn't have to worry about the porcupine's quills. Finally, he agreed, and then the fun began. All was going well as they scrambled back and forth carrying the pine cone. Prickles was carrying it and dashing it wildly to towards his goal where, when there was an upset. Razzy's quick little sister, Reba, ran in front of him from the side and Prickles fell over her. Razzy and Bucky were right behind. There was no way to stop in time. Razzy fell on top of Pickles and Bucky fell on top of Razzy. Get off, Bucky, get off, screamed Razzy. The weight of Bucky's body pressed Razzy down on Prickles and the porcupine's quills bit into the raccoon. Bucky jumped from up from where he had landed on top of the raccoon. He was also in pain, but he had only two or three quills stuck in him. Poor Razzy was covered with them. They were all over him, and several were stuck in his nose. Reba and Ruby stared in horror at their brother. Bucky jumped around, crying and trying to pull out the quills that were in him. I'm sorry, guys, said Prickles with tears in his eyes. It was an accident. I didn't mean to do it. Let me help you get them out, he offered, reaching toward the quill stuck in Bucky's paw. Bucky jumped back in alarm. Don't touch me, Prickles, he yelled. You'll get another one in me. Ruby ran to call her parents. The raccoon home wasn't far away, and in just a few minutes, father and mother raccoon were on the scene. Mother attended to Razzy. Father helped Bucky pull out the quill stuck in him. Mother raccoon helped Razzy to a stump where he sat down. She began to pull out the quills, each one cut like a knife. Bucky stood nearby, sniffing and rubbing his leg where the quills had hurt him. Reba, run over to Dr. Owl and ask him to come quickly. I'll need some medicine right away, said Mother Raccoon. Reba took off running, glad for the opportunity to do something to help. Prickles stood by crying as he realized how seriously Razzy was hurt. We know you didn't mean to hurt him, Prickles, Father Raccoon said soothingly. He was trying to hold Razzy still as Mother pulled the quills out. I'm not going to play with Prickles anymore, said little Ruby with tears rolling down her face. It's too d d d dangerous she cried, stumbling over the big words she had heard Bucky use. She loved her big brother and couldn't stand to see him hurt. Prickles began to cry harder. Turning around blindly, he ran right into Bucky. For Pete's sake, Pickles, Prickles, watch where you're going. You almost got me again, yelled Bucky, jumping back quickly to avoid the porky's quills. At that, Prickles started for home. He knew he wasn't wanted. What's keeping Dr. Owl, worried Father Raccoon, looking up at the sky? I thought he would be here by now. Maybe he's with another patient, Mother Raccoon. Hold another quill free. Suddenly, Bucky realized that Prickles was gone. He knew the porcupine felt terrible about what had happened. 
I've got to find him and tell him it's all right, thought Bucky. Just then, a dark shadow appeared overhead. Looking up, Bucky saw Dr. Owl flying in with his big black bag in his beak. The owl swooped low and landed. Now, my chance to go look for pickles. Prickles, thought Bucky. He knew Razzie was in good hands with his parents and the owl doctor. Hurrying down the wooded path leading to Beaver Falls, Bucky thought he would likely find Prickles up in his favorite tree. As he ran along, he met Reba, coming back from getting Dr. Owl. Dr. Owl is already with Razzie, he explained. Too bad you can't fly or you'd be there too, he joked. Reba didn't laugh. She was too worried about Razzie. He'll be all right, Reba. Your mother is pulling the quills out, and doctor will put medicine on him. He'll be fine. The little girl raccoon wiped her eyes and snuffled. Yes, but he wouldn't have been hurt if we hadn't played with prickles. She snuffed. Tears rolled down her furry face from her little black masked eyes. I know, but accidents do happen, responded the beaver gently. He patted her shoulder awkwardly. That old prickles. He shouldn't be around other animals, stormed Razzie's angry little sister, stamping her foot. Porcupines are no good. He's very, he's really a very nice animal, Reba. It was more our fault than his. It just wasn't wise to play football. He didn't mean to hurt Razzie. Bucky could see his words had little effect on Reba. She stood with her head bent, still crying. He is really very sorry, Reba, continued Bucky. He went home crying. I was just going to look for him so he won't feel so bad. Well, I hope he does feel bad, real bad, she yelled and stomped off. Bucky sighed and continued on his way. When he found Prickles, he could not convince the porcupine that all would be well. Prickles was brokenhearted. I hate being a porcupine, he told Bucky. It just isn't fair. It was a very difficult time for Bucky. When Chatty Chipmunk heard what happened, she made up bad stories about Prickles. Bucky tried to convince the forest folk that Prickles was really a good and gentle animal, but none of them believed him. No one would give Prickles a chance. And to make matters worse, Razzie became unfriendly to Bucky. Somehow, the raccoon blamed Bucky for his problem with Prickles. One moonlit night, Bucky and his family were cutting trees near the shore of Shroon Lake. Razzie and his family were fishing on the beach. Bucky wished things were like they used to be when he and Razzie were better friends. Then Bucky might have been fishing with them. Taking a break from the hard job of lumberjack, Bucky straightened up and mopped his forehead with his neck cloth. As he did, he looked through the trees and watched Razzie's family. It was fun to watch the raccoons catch fish and then carefully watch each bite before they ate. They were such interesting animals. As Bucky watched, he suddenly drew in his breath and began to shake. Something was creeping out of the woods. Father, look, it's a bear, he stammered in a hoarse whisper. Bucky was so frightened he could hardly get the words out. Father dropped the branch he was carrying and stared down the beach. Don't move, he commanded. But father, he'll get Razzie's family. What can we do? cried Bucky wildly. We must mourn them. He started to run towards the raccoons. Stop, Bucky. We're no match for a bear. All we can do is thump our tails. Father and then Bucky began to thump their tails on the ground. This was a danger signal the entire animal world understood. The moment the raccoons heard the beavers thumping, they stopped fishing and looked up. But it was too late. The bear was almost upon them. They backed into the water, trying to get away, but he was right after them. Plunging into the lake, the bear first swiped his big, big paw at Reba, who screamed with terror and jumped away. With a tremendous roar that shook the trees, the bear next grabbed for Razzie. He brushed him with his big paw, and Razzie flew out of the water onto the beach. The bear lunged after him. It was all happening right before Bucky's eyes. The little beaver hid his face in his paws. He couldn't stand to watch. Suddenly, it happened. Out of the woods appeared a small, round form that looked more like a prickly ball than an animal. With a growl, growl the ball moved straight for, towards the black bear, who now turned away from Razzie. There was a scream from the bear as Prickles the porcupine turned around and let loose his armor of quills. Now you might be thinking that the porcupine shot his quills out at the bear. But that's not true. Porcupines can't shoot their quills out. What porcupines do when they feel threatened is they'll puff up their quills and make themselves as big as possible, and then they'll stomp their feet and back up into whatever's making them feel threatened. So the loose quills just fall out. Like hair falls out of your head, quills fall out of a porcupine. Roaring and screaming in pain, the bear plunged blindly into the forest. His soft nose and face were full of porcupine quills. 
He wouldn't bother the raccoons now. Bucky, Prickles, had saved the raccoon family. Father Beaver said putting his paw on his little beaver's shoulder. Bucky was still shaking. Taking his paw from his face, Bucky could hardly believe what he saw. Father and mother, raccoon, were safely walking up the beach toward the beavers. They were carrying the twins. Razzie was limping ahead of them and seemed to be all right. Bucky, Bucky, did you see what happened? yelled Razzie breathlessly. Prickles saved our lives. That bear almost had us. Bucky ran to meet his friend. I know, I know, Razzie. Are you all right? He grabbed his friend and gave him a hug. We tried to warn you by thumping our tails, but it was too late. I thought you were goners for sure. He, he got my leg a little, but not bad. Can you believe that porcupine, Bucky? Wasn't he something? He just stormed right out there and let those old quills go. I guess there's some good in a porcupine after all. Razzie just couldn't stop talking about their lifesaver. Prickles, by this time, the raccoon family had reached there, reached father and mother beaver. Look, father, isn't that Prickles over there in the trees? Ruby excitedly pointing towards the woods. Sure enough, a little prickly ball was peering out at them. I'll go get him, said Reba, jumping out of Mother Raccoon's arms. Prickles, come on out. Our family wants to thank you for saving our lives. We're all sorry for how we treated you. It took a little convincing for the shy, gentle Porky to come with her, but when he did, there was much rejoicing. Mother Raccoon wiped her eyes on her apron as she stood with Mother Beaver. Both mothers were thinking what could have happened if Prickles had not done his work so bravely. Oh, Prickles, I'd just love to give you a big hug, she said, Mother Raccoon, but how can I do that? She looked at his quills. Ah, oh, it's easy. You just have to hug from a distance like this, he said, leaning over and placing his paws gently on Mother Raccoon's paws. She laughed and carefully leaned closer to him. That'll work, Razzie laughed. We just have to learn how to manage him and his prickles. I don't think that will be too hard, said Father Raccoon. We've certainly learned tonight that his quills are very important. He has them for a good reason. I guess so, said Bucky with a smile. Now that we understand how his quills work, maybe we can all play together. Right, said Razzie, looking at his friend Bucky. Now we can all play together again, but not football, joked Prickles. Not even touch, said Reba. No, I don't think football's a good idea, agreed Mother Raccoon. But how about some crayfish crumpets and tea at our house? The beavers, raccoons, and porcupine all thought that was a great suggestion. So Bree, who are you with today here reading this really super cool book? All right, so today we have Charles. This is Charles right here. And Cleo over here. They are a pair of African crested porcupines. And where are they located in the zoo? So when we do finally open, um, people can come and visit this charming couple. Yeah, this couple is located in the Biodiversity Hall where we have our new Finnick Fox kits and our Red Fox. Um, Sal the Sloth is here too, so we've got a bunch of fun animals here. Thank you so much for reading this really fun book today, Brie. We appreciate it. Thank you.